That's what that's what they always say. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's that time again. We're back here in the space book and we are about to dive in, dive in with a bit of casual chat about pretty plastic things that often come in disc form and other stuff that we've picked up. Have a drink and have a chat for half an hour or so with my mate, Matt Pot, self-identifying mm. naughty boy. <laughs> Good to see you, mate. So, yeah, have Hello. you been out and about? Have you got anything on pre-order? Anything turned up in the post? What have they bought you nice Ooh, this week? Uh, well, on? my poltergeist... 4K has just been um, shipped, so that will take about three or four weeks to get here. <laughs> but I did receive this week um, my Star Trek The Motion Picture on 4K oh, wow. special yeah. edition, which has got about four or five discs in it, plus a bonus disc. So it's various um, versions of that first movie. Yeah. Yeah, all, all of them. All of them. It's a um, stunning box set. Yeah. yeah it's, um, the Complete Adventure. <laughs> I love it. But, uh, yeah, I watched this the other night and I've never had so yeah. much fun. So and you, like me, and you've got about four different versions of it already. You just want <laughs> Yeah, 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 I do. Um, I've got the – I actually bought the 4K uh, – the, the Blu-ray standard uh, – the Blu-ray version of Motion Picture, and I was, like, really surprised because I was like, oh, it's not the director's cut. So um, when I found out the director's cut was coming out on Blu-ray – and on 4K, I was like, yeah, no, I have to get it. Um, but uh, I also got this week um, this one. <laughs> oh, the uh, the animated, animated series. series. Yeah, they had um, they had the animated series on. So that's that's special. the full Star Trek the animated series on on DVD or Blu-ray. Yeah, no, it's Blu-ray. Yeah, I've, I'll only I've ever buy that. things on Blu-ray now. I've got it on DVD too, but um, with the if you remember those disc. The, the what the original Star Wars, uh, the Star Trek um, discs used to come out in those weird cassette type containers. Yes. They used to come in the white containers. I've actually got that on DVD, but I thought, yeah, no, I need to upgrade it to, to, to Blu ray. So, yeah, so that's what I got. Another thing that came out this week. Oh, Chris is back. We've got, we got Chris back, everybody from Cultivated Media. Hello. Hey. Hello, hey, Chris. What's up? Matt was just showing you're gonna love this, mate. Just show show Chris what you just had on screen. Uh the the the, the animated series or the Or both. <laughs> okay. Sorry everybody, so, but <laughs> <laughs> I've got the 4K director's edition of Star Trek the Motion Picture. That is a big box. It's big yeah, box it's very well thin, filled. but but it has you open it up. I'll open it up. I don't think we got and that. And it comes with watch. a little thing no, from Robert to, Wise. Either. comes from a little thing because he's no longer with us. But um, it comes with a little introduction by Robert Wise about, you know, how how they went about um, recreating the special effects and everything for it and extending it. And that's how the discs come in. Like Because his director's edition of that came out in 2001 on DVD, didn't it? Yeah. 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 Did well, they, have they upscaled it? Um, no, no, they actually had to go back and uh, recreate the uh, special effects. Yeah. Um, when I was watching it, um, some of the some of the mat lines and everything was still kind of there. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it looks it looks amazing. I was just like my my jaw was dropping at a few times, and um, yeah, it it does look nice. It really does. If you want to show off a four K. Uh, anything 4K, this is the one to do it because of the color. Oh my god, it's I'm, beautiful! It's on my list. I haven't picked up the uh Star Trek 4Ks yet. Well, last year we had the set of just four, which is just ludicrous. Uh, it, it's on my list, but the problem is it's so freaking expensive that it's like my Blu ray budget for like a month. Oh, well, I already waited for <laughs> this to go down ten dollars down in price mm. as it was. And um, but the one that was releasing here only had the director's cut, not the theatrical or you know um, uh, the TV version or anything like that. Whereas this did, so I was like, yeah, no, I need I've, to. I've it. long since given up trying to keep track of all the different versions of the motion picture, aren't they? Yeah, it's the same with Superman two and all that. Mm. Um, so I also got Star Trek the animated series as well, Chris. Oh, cool! I. 
yeah i got the, i got that six years ago it came out i actually i've had it for six years i haven't watched it yet i, I I've, I've seen them i just have i no, i watched one episode of the blu-ray it's uh that's a problem with collecting you end up with so much crap you have yeah. no you have no time to watch it I oh, know. I'm the same. Oh, no. I upgraded Especially from the DVD to the Blu-ray of that of that show as well. I did my complete rewatch of TOS and the animated series and Star Trek Continues and the movies. Probably around three years ago, I wrapped on that, and uh, and then I saw I saw the animated series on Blu-ray in a uh, I think it was in a charity shop. I paid I paid about two quid for it. It's yeah, it's that this exact comes in same an ring. <laughs> yeah, that's it's exactly. This is like the that, UK sure version, so oh, yeah, yeah, no, the it's, same, uh, it's yeah. The same. It's identical as to what we got aside from we don't have the ugly ratings thing as in the corner. This actually wasn't getting released in Australia, so this is the UK version as well. I'm assuming. So I'm that assuming that's region locked. Well, no, actually, no. Wait, no, it's 4K. Oh. It wouldn't be region locked. I'm no, it's 4K. Yeah, yeah, it's not region locked. I'm like, but um, we don't have that problem here because we have the same blu-ray region is the uk so yeah um oh we, we do but yeah no it's uh <laughs> I, I may look at the price to import that but i can imagine it's not cheap uh no it wasn't it no. wasn't even with ten dollars off <laughs> um so another i've got two more things oh three more things actually okay. um so i got the mummy by uh this one's um peter cushing oh. The Mummy okay. with Christopher Lee as the Mummy. Oh, that's this really is a, nice. Arrow is video, a, is that? No. No, this is uh, through... This is Hammer Films. I need my glasses. Um, so yeah, that Second, second Sight. Second, second Sight, sight Films. That's the other yep. label, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That so looks really nice. Second Sight film. It comes with the, the uh, little booklet and... Uh, and um, postcards and if one of these labels was to pick up the whole of the hammer lion and do a do <sighs> set editions like that of everything they ever made i would commit i would like a part work i would buy every single one yeah the, this comes with a whole heap of postcards and stuff like that from the film and uh yeah it, it's just nice so i thought i'll get it um but one more other thing that took forever to get here in Australia. This is the Australian version, and it took like three months to get here. And I'm sorry, Chris, I'm going to be bringing it up. But um, this is Doctor Who Season 22. It was only released this week in Australia. Oh, no, so, I, I'm, st I'm still a fan of the original series. I yeah. have uh, I, I have that pre-ordered. I don't know if I'm going to keep it because I usually just get them used. It's at the bottom of my list. It still comes with the thing. special booklet and everything. Yeah, nice. But yeah, yeah no, it took it took three months. Crazy. And then nice this is set. the this is the piece de la resistance. Okay, so you remember earlier in our last little discussion, we're talking about comic books. Oh yeah, yes, yesterday, and, on yesterday's uh, show, but yesterday's show is preserved. Yeah, yesterday's, yesterday's. Um, <laughs> I I haven't bought a comic book in a long time. But when I heard this was getting released, I was like, I have to get this. I've got way too many books as it is, and I don't know what I'm going to do with them all. But um, this is oh, fantastic. I, for... When we talked about the, the Spawn thing and some books taking years to make, I nearly mentioned that because Alex, this is Alex Ross's book, isn't it? It is. There's Alex Ross's oh, name there. It looks gorgeous. It's hardback. Uh, it is. It is. This is the hardback. Wow. And uh, there's some of the artwork for it. So it's got a Jack Kirby kind of feel. Yeah, well, he went for that. Beautiful. Yeah. He was a huge fan of Jack Kirby. So yeah, this. Um, this this is a graphic novel. <laughs> so um, yeah, but I was like, yeah, no, I have because to get proper because... graphic novels. They didn't come out as single floppy editions before, do they? Proper graphic novels only come out in the one edition, mm. rather than a collected mm. edition. Yeah, they only well. A graphic novel is something that's nothing, nothing to do with comics whatsoever. It's just a special hard book, you know, bookshelf edition. So that's what this is. So this is um, this is uh, Marvel's print, uh, imprint, uh, Marvel Arts. So, but if you go on to Alex Ross's um, YouTube channel, um, he will show you how he actually went about making this, and he actually created his own sculptures and everything to work from. And I'm a huge Alex Ross fan, really? so I mean, ever since Marvels, 
What you so, makes and, you wonder why he's not making movies? Why he's not doing? Because I know like, Frank Miller directed The Spirit, didn't he? He's dabbled in movies. He he won't he won't play the game, Dan. He yeah. um he he's not woke. Uh, they know that he's a money spinner, but when they try to and get, he he'll only working. do what he wants to do. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, and he's so, an odd chap. Uh, he is, but uh, he's extremely talented. Yeah, and um. You know he can do what he wants, and so you know. I mean, I can't wait to 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 delve into this book, and I've been looking forward to it since it was announced. So because it looks um, cinematic, not just I know well, Kirby stuff always all this did. stuff is cinematic. I mean, you know, you just he just does his own thing, you know, and it's just uh uh yeah. Well, it is. It's like um you know. I mean, his stuff like Kingdom Come. And everything like that. Who needs a movie? You've got it on yeah, the on fair, the page, fair point. Fair point. you know. So, yeah, um, and you know they're going to change things anyway. But um, <laughs> I want to watch yeah, Sin City uh, that, again now. I was never yeah. a fan of Sin City. Yeah, I like the, really? I like the first one. Yeah, no, I never ever not never ever really a fan of Frank Miller. Uh, it's I, it's uh, really weird. I, I, I like not... the first Sin City. Uh, the second one was well there. Uh, but yeah, no, it's. Uh, I don't know if that one's getting a 4K release or not. Uh, that would look brilliant in 4K. To. Yeah, it has to, surely. I noticed yeah. that they're bringing yeah. out the Keanu Reeves film Johnny Mnemonic as a sort of black and white edition, just like they did, <laughs> just like they did the Max Fury Road movie. Did you see that? I've never seen Johnny oh, that Mnemonic. Was, that was terrible. Uh, what was that? Chrome something Chrome edition. Yeah. For Mad Max. So yeah. Um, I uh, I have Johnny Mnemonic is one film that I have not owned since VHS. <laughs> I've never even seen it. I, 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 it always reminds me. There's a scene in uh, Third Rock from the Sun where they're in a video store trying to rent something. I'm like, nope, but we do have 50 copies of Johnny Mnemonic. And the joke is they have nothing else, but nobody wants to rent Johnny <laughs> Mnemonic. I don't, honestly, I don't remember much about it other than thinking. This, this this was the time before Keanu Reeves learned how to act, where, you know, now he is, I think, a very talented actor. But oh, young Keanu ooh. Reeves, no. Yeah, you want to see him act. You see him in Bram Stoke, Stoker's Dracula. Oh, the accent. The bastard sleeps. <laughs> oh, but, but you watch some of the stuff he does now, I'm like, he's actually good. He actually worked oh, on it. Oh, he's, he's, uh, he's, everybody loves him now. You know, it's great. I feel bad for him being dragged into that uh, the Matrix disaster, which started off brilliantly. The first, the first third, or the first third of the movie is actually brilliant. Then it just completely shits itself and falls off the rails. And uh, I keep forgetting they made it. I've, I yeah. had no interest. In it's uh, well, watch the first third and then just turn it off. Uh, well, he he's kind of doing a revisit of his greatest hits. Like he he's fine. It I actually really like it. You can actually tell when you compare Keanu Reeves in the first three to Keanu Reeves in this one. Like it, it's night and day. Like it's wow, you've actually learned how to act over the years. Um, but yeah, he's done that. He's done the the Bill and Ted, which I think was a misstep. I think that should have been left as it was. It was okay, Maybe but it was. wasn't great. Uh, but no, he for now on he he's John Wick. The same. Uh, is the fourth John Wick's coming in a few months' time? I think oh, those should have back to back. Yeah. Well, I, back as back. a uh, as a dog mm -hmm. person, I appreciate the and my my friends like. I uh, can't watch that first movie ever again. Well, no, <laughs> it's really uh, it, it's uh, and I've said about this before. I'm okay with the animals being killed in horror because it's always so over the top and ridiculous. Uh, but in drama or action, when it's done too realistically, I can't watch it. Like I I watched uh marley and me once and it uh, oh. that, was, that was like 14 years ago and i'm still not over it no um but i remember <laughs> watching uh i was it th this was several years ago i was interested like you got to check out john wick it's awesome like okay so we were at my friend's house and then they they all kind of laughed at me i had to get up and leave the room when that scene comes up because i i can't watch it no uh it, it, it's the same thing one of my favorite um recent tv series is the chernobyl series that came out a few years ago which is absolutely brilliant Ooh, I think yes i've, I've got that it. on 4k uh, well i've watched it a few times except for the, the that terrible scene in the village with the dogs i Ooh. each time i watch it i have to skip that whole part 
but yeah, it's uh, but uh, outside. I'll of make that, sure I skip that bit. <laughs> what episode is that no, in? You, you, you don't want to yeah. watch it. How did we get? Oh yeah, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> oh, Johnny Mnemonic. See, this is what happens. We're gonna work our way backwards. <laughs> But, yeah, but yes, so never Johnny Mnemonic is bad, and I can't stand. No, bad I've never seen Johnny Mnemonic. He did make he did make a really good movie. Like, who wasn't it with him? It was called Chain Reaction. Oh, yes, yeah. he was on a motorbike, and he was trying to avoid the in an explosion. Oh, what, yeah. One of his uh, what, one of his best movies is one that everybody else seems to hate. A movie called Knock Knock. Uh, oh, that's yeah, that did uh, look good. I've not. Oh, no, it, it's actually it, it, ignore what the critics say. It's actually really well done. And, the thriller, isn't it? Uh yeah, th- uh, borderline thriller horror, but closer to being thriller. Um, I would actually recommend watching it because the whole huh, thing Morgan puts Freeman. you on edge, and then th- the way it ends, it's just he's a fictional character, and you feel terrible for him, but I'm not going to spoil what it is, but it's... Yeah, I'm, de- I'm definitely going to go... I, the, the things that... Well, I like the fact that Keanu Reeves has has fun. It's, it seems to me like he's always been a movie star well, uh, yeah, before, but he's, before he's, he could act. He's, he's, he's <laughs> one of the few people that's known as being like a, a genuinely nice guy, like one of the only ones in Hollywood, where you have celebrities that will, you know, uh, virtue signal about the good things they do. No, he's as long as he's been doing going back to bill and ted uh he's always given a large portion of his uh his revenue to charities i think in some cases i think for the matrix movies i think he gave more than half of it away and he didn't want anyone to know about it and and he did this for about 20 years or more than 20 years and then somebody leaked it and He actually, he got upset because he's like, no, I don't want people to know I do this. I do this because I want to do this. I do not want the fame for this. So he's, you know, and you can see that in his interviews and his performances. He's like Scott Bakula, just like a genuinely, you know, decent, good person. Good good man. Yeah. Yeah. I can quite believe it. Now, what what else have you picked up, Matt? Anything? Oh, that's it. That's it now. (laughs) I haven't got anything with Keanu Reeves in it. Although... (laughs) I, I do remember a film that he did, um, the seventh something. Um, you probably know it, Chris. It's one with the the. It's a Japanese one where he's in Japan. I have that on three D. Oh, 3D. I know the movie, and I can't think of I've the name that. because you've made me think about the name whenever I think about something. <laughs> my brain blocks it out, but I know the movie you're talking about. And it was just before <laughs> so he did um, uh, John Wick, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I just I I like that film. <laughs> people, a lot of people really really hate it. Like my my son, he went to see it and said it was good. I can't remember what it was called either. But he had he had a lot of fun with it. I know the movie, and I, I I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty sure sir ah I can't, I'm, my brain is just dying. Uh, yeah, no, I think I actually own it. Well, I'd have to go <laughs> find. I it's like I'm one happy of these to days say I'll, I'll share pictures of the the scope of my physical media collection. Oh, I'd love um, usually that. whenever I'm... somebody comes into my house, well, it's uh, in the house I live in now. I have it in my office, but in the apartment that I lived in before, it was all like it was a really long two bedroom apartment, and along the whole wall on one side, it was all Blu-rays. Here, it's in this room. I actually have it divided into two rooms. The Blu-rays, like the all the walls of my office are shelves. That's Blu-rays upstairs. In my spare room, I've got TV shows and I got DVDs, but. Uh, yeah, it's whenever somebody sees it is holy shit, and that <laughs> you actually watch all this. Actually, most yeah. of the movies, yeah, I, I, I watch I a movie those every reactions. night. I get those reactions as well. These are the latest things that I found. In fact, some of them just this very morning. So I've picked up this book here. Ah, uh, Red, oh. Red Dwarf. This is the official Red Dwarf companion, <laughs> but it it only goes up to this is six pounds ninety nine. I think this only goes up to series five. Uh, I think that it would came be out nineteen ninety. Anyway, that's before it's, Christian Catan. Not nineteen ninety two. This book 92? came out, so that's only up to Red Ooh, Dwarf okay. four. I think. Yeah, it's got some lovely pictures. Mm. There's there, there's still not a massive amount of Red Dwarf merchandise out there. I never owned this no. back in the day. I used to have every copy of the Red Dwarf magazine. I sold them all a few years ago. But this is a cracking little book. I think it's from yes, from Titan Books. Lots of big 
Lots of lovely big pictures there of the cast. It's all in oh, colour too. So yeah, this was I think this was twenty five p. I'd always always wanted it. Even better, you're going to love this one, Matt. This is right up your street. British comedy from the fifties and the sixties. You like a bit of Will Will Hay, don't you? Oh yeah, I love Will Hay. That's he's a, not, he's that's not, not like thirties forties, mate. So that's pretty old. <laughs> he's not he's not in these, but that was the closest oh. I could think. I, for ten p, I picked up this box set oh, wow. of the four Centrinians films from the late fifties. In I think the last one was made oh, in sixty eight. So that, <laughs> there's actually 10... a few more made after that, but yes, they try to forget about that. But that yeah, they were they went to another studio though, didn't they? There was Blue mm. Murder at Centrinians and various these are the four Warners ones. I think Carol Ann yeah. Ford from Doctor Who is in one of these. I don't know which oh, one it yeah. is. But uh, yeah, that that wow. is uh, a nice collection there. I've I remember I've got watching the first one on Blu ray. The first one the first one um came out as a classic, a BFI. So um, I have the very first one, but none of the others. I haven't others. seen any of them since I was a kid. Never seen them in order. Well, I know the first they one actually on. has Roger Delgado in it. Does he? Oh, very, he, very he briefly. Better. Very so briefly. I've, I've no idea how many of the characters sort of go one into the other. I did see the, the one they did with um, Rupert Everett like 10, 15 years ago, whatever that was. Oh, no, no. <laughs> one from the 90s here. Again, never, ever, ever seen this. Always meant to, never did, despite the fact that it's got animation in it it's also got a bloke i never never really knew in this country this man was not famous and even now people only know him because he's associated with shoes it's michael jordan and it's the first space Ooh. jam movie there i've never seen yeah. this either that was Bill an american Murray thing oh, oh you, you it must, was uh, just american check out the website yeah they've archived it the, as it was when it came out in 1996 well, has it been okay. has it been messed with since then? Is no, it one of those no, they, they, they purposely no, they archived it. So uh, they they've they've updated the web standards. Uh, but no, if you go to the Space Jam website, it is identical to the website from '96. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh God, I'll well, go and look that up. Yeah, '90s internet before that would have been before I'd even looked so, at the internet. That but movie never, I've never seen. seen. This. No, you, you I've too. never ever seen it either. I was convinced that you were you were going to tell me, oh my God, you've never seen Space Jam? Oh my God. Yeah. No. No, well, I was really a surprised a couple now. of years ago to find out Bill Murray was in it. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's yeah. in it? <laughs> yes, that's the, that's the film I've never <laughs> I've seen. seen back in so. action, though. That, yeah, me too. I like that. <laughs> I, I really like that movie. Daleks are in that. So Daleks in that, that one. I've also, now this one, I've already I've already got this movie. I don't know if you're a Double Dippers, guys, but I am. I've uh, already got it. I've already yeah. got the Breakfast Club, but this, this was actually, Ooh. this is cheating really because this was bought for me. My brother picked this up for me when he was at a second-hand place. This is the two-disc special edition of the Breakfast Club, and it's got a load of features oh, and yeah. stuff on because I've got, I've got the first edition. It's got no features on it. It's not been remastered. It's really sort of unloved. This is one of my favorite all-time movies. I probably will buy the Blu-ray eventually, but he saw this and knew that I wanted it because this is the edition that he's got. So I think he would have paid like 50p for it or something like that. But yes, I don't think you can have too many copies of the, of the Breakfast Club anyway. So it's uh, just any excuse to rewatch it, really. <laughs> but I love all the John... Well, I don't love all the John Hughes movies, come to think. 16 Candles never did much for me. I didn't the, like... The I didn't like Ferris stuff. Bueller. I didn't... Really? I, didn't like well, I do one. like yeah, that. Yeah, no. I'm, like the, the, the thing is, Chris, is like there's a lot of American films like... Um, you know, teen angsty American films that don't really make a lot of sense, and it's only I... because of the the it's only because of the 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 place where I live. You know, it's yeah. a totally different school structure. It's it's just yeah, it it just yeah, never we're really uh, Canada's basically frat, frat uh, societies. You know, all that the U.S. with maple leaves. Well, I I, think, I, I love those. I don't know. If, uh, it, actually, no, I probably would still like them now. But I think for me, it's nostalgia i've got one of my sections is films that i grew up with that i watched over and over again like there's ferris bueller's day off uh, revenge of the nerds um, oh i like back to school <laughs> i've never seen revenge <laughs> of the nerds either. that's the, really no i've just never got around to seeing that adventures uh, in babysitting yes oh no that was called um oh it was called something night, else a night here. on the town it was called a night, a on, night the town on the town well. you're right dan yeah it was yeah Elizabeth Shue and, oh, and, and well, what's his name from Star Trek? Oh, she she yeah. could sing on my brush anytime. Well, hey, <laughs> <I'm also> gonna... 
I think this it's one's in the, the film. 80s. It's in the film. I think this one's. I think this one's from the eighties. I think it might have just squeezed in there in nineteen eighty nine. Bird on a wire with gold. Now I don't like go- Goldie Horn. Most no. of it, most of the time she leaves me cold. <laughs> but put her with Mel Gibson in a John Badham film. I'm down for this. I'm going to give this a go. Never never seen it. It's one of those unseen gems from the eighties that I've just never got round to. But uh, yeah, it looks looks like it could be a good time because I increasingly want to escape back to the eighties. Try and try and. Pretend that the eighties yep. never uh, stopped. Like that. Still happening. Uh, uh, I'm yep. like that with the eighties no, and the nineties. The nineties not so much. Pretend every everything stopped at around uh, <laughs> 2005 is a great stopping it, point for me. So nothing happened after 2005. <laughs> it's 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 weird seeing a movie I've never ever actually sat down to watch from the 1980s or something, and it's really good. And you hear about it being good and that, and when you actually go watch it. And then you're like, this is like gold. <laughs> how did yeah, how did I not this is exactly my sensibilities. No. How did I not know this thing existed? Or why didn't I why why when I was in the rental store looking at VHS cassettes, why did I always look past that one and go on to rent Return of the Jedi I think, again? I think to a degree, because I was in age nothing wrong with Return of the Jedi. Um, Ewoks. Um, but uh, <laughs> it, it, there's a lot of things like um with the 80s films is I, I i had a strict parent i had strict parents okay so it was a bit weird because sometimes they'd have they'd let me stay up to watch salem's lot on tv and i'd have nightmares for weeks and then there's stuff like rambo which i've never seen one movie of rambo uh i've never seen any of those because like you know they're like 18 plus or whatever and so i've never en- ended up watching any of them you know and so, yeah, it's 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 a weird thing that I'm I'm it's I'm getting around oh, to watching corru- things. Corrupt your mind. It's it's another one. <laughs> I think this was made in the eighties. This was yeah, it was around the time. If you remember, we were talking on yesterday's show about Disney and when things could have went off the rails for them a little in the mid eighties. But Don Bluth was sort of stepping up to the plate, and American Tale was released. And so was so was this. All dogs go to heaven. I've never seen um, this. Where, that's the one with. Um, Oh, uh, all I remember doing? is contains Smokey sad, the some sad puppy scene, so I can't watch it. Oh, it's Jack, Smokey Jackie Bandit. Gleason, is it? Is it? Is no, it no, no. Um, oh, the one from uh, the other one, Sally Field. No, the other one, oh, Dom, the one she was Dom, married to. Dom De Louise is in it. No, he's, the, he's a voice yeah, artist. Yeah, he's in that. He's in that. But isn't that? Oh, that's Char. Is that Charles? No, oh, far out. I can't remember. <laughs> No, I, but uh, Dom DeLuise is a voice artist. never actually watched it because I know that this. dogs... So is Lonely Anderson. <laughs> People like that. But yeah, it's. Uh, I think I'm just getting more and more interested in Don Bluth. Uh, he's got a book just been published, I think, about his entire career. I've got his and, signature. Uh, an American tale. I've got his... Uh, uh, he did... Because um, he did a very famous uh, video game called uh, Dragon's Lair. Yes, I remember and trying to play that. <laughs> Next to Impossible. The, yeah, and a dollar a, a, a go... And um, yeah, he uh, he was going to redo Dragon's Lair, and it's the only time that I've actually paid money for an Indiegogo, and I'm still waiting for the damn movie. And then they changed it. They're like, "Oh, we're going to make a little a little two minute reel um, to show prospective buyers." Oh, I see the studios and that and then it just totally it's gone it's gone by the wayside he's 85 he just had his birthday so happy, happy birthday, birthday don mm-hmm. well done son and yeah give mo- give matt his money back for fuck's sake uh, but I've picked no up no no i well. got the book it's all right i got a signed book and plus <laughs> his um offside of wishes me happy birthday every year it's fine <laughs> i think that i think this was well this one's got two films Gary in so Goldblum. it's the, the headliner is Arnold Schwarzenegger, Hercules in New York. But I've actually had this. This was this is still in its cellophane. I've actually bought this at a car boot sale. In, I think it was five for a pound. So I could get the final countdown. It's got... Yep. Uh, who's in this? That's the one Kirk with... Douglas, Kirk Douglas and, Mike, and uh, Michael Sheen. Martin Sheen are in this. Have you it's seen a, that? Science fiction movie. I saw it once years ago. And That's the I'm one where they're all... They all get melded into the boat, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's that, and there's this, the final countdown, and the Philadelphia I get always experiments. Get that confused. Yeah, I, get, yeah, I always I get, get them confused. Up. 
which bit was in which. This is a cheap edition on some god awful label that I've never heard of before. Oh my god! You know, I've got this. I don't know if they've ever ever released a proper version, but I have the keep, which is on DVD. (laughs) I can't stand that film. No, I don't need that. But it's like the, the it's it's actually a copy of the video from oh, the, yeah, so you can see the tracky yeah. you can see the tracky and it's like oh my god it's I can't watch it <laughs> got, a, got a few like that yeah yeah so um I, I may watch Hercules in New York I remember watching uh, that when I was a kid when Predator uh, and Commando were out and stuff but. well I, I, that's the one where I believe Arnold is overdubbed. And, uh, oh, he's overdubbed in a couple of them. He's overdubbed yeah. in Cactus Jack as well. Uh, and uh, isn't that the one where you see um, Arnold Frontal in all its glory? Was it that oh, one? Oh, God. Okay, maybe I won't be watching mm. that. I've got I, Cactus Jack It might Jack be that one. Well. Yeah, so I think I'll stick with the final countdown rather than uh, rather than uh, a full frontal Arnie. Thank, thanks very much, Mr. Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. No one wants to see that. And But the... Uh, Finally, oh no, I've got two more. Secondly, I've got this Red Two with Bruce Willis. Ooh, now, I, yeah. No, I, I didn't like Red One very much no, because the Red Red series. If you read the books, it has nothing to do that 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 movie has nothing to do with the Red the Red comic. I never all, uh, really. read the comic. I I didn't mind the movies. They're yeah, I, I suppose if I'd read the comic, I'd probably hate them. But the I'll, comic I'll, was a solo watchable. thing. The comic was a solo thing. It was just the Bruce Willis character, and you could tell it was based on Bruce Willis. Because red stands for retired, extremely dangerous, yeah. doesn't it? Yep, yep. And they try to kill him. They try oh, to kill him off because he knows too much. And that's the whole the whole thing is him trying to make his way to the big kingpin, the one that his boss who's trying to get him killed because he know, has oh. too much info, you know. But this one, it's a, it's an ensemble, and I don't. It's not. No. Yeah, this one is too. Helen Mirren's in it again. The, the first yeah. one, I I thought it was okay, but I always said I'd only buy the second one if if it was part of some deal. I think it was three for a pound or five for a pound. It's okay. Give <laughs> give, give yeah, me that like, one as well. They were uh, both bargain bin uh, Blu-ray purchases for me. I think actually, I think I yeah. did get the Blu-ray. I, in the $5 I was surprised bin. it even got a sequel. To be honest. Well, they've had to stop. Yeah, I can't even remember who directed the first one. It's, it's the name on the back of this is nobody I recognise. But but uh, lastly for the movies, Chris, I couldn't believe this. After we spoke last time, I went to a car boot sale the very next day and I only went and found this. This is uh, Betty Davis, the Watcher in the Woods. We oh, talk- you bastard. We were talking I still about- don't own that. And Does I- that come <laughs> with a special? Is that the special edition? Is that the one with the alternate ending? This is a bare bones thing that D- Disney put out a load of these yeah. probably around 20 years ago. There's yeah, actually an alternate to ending be, to uh, that. I think they were Disney Club or whatever it was called back then, exclusives. Uh, I've seen it pop up every now and then on Amazon. I, I've been holding out for uh, a Blu-ray, but since it's Disney, uh, it's probably not getting a Blu-ray. That's probably the best we're going to do. It's See, now, now I want to go and just order it. See, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, uh, I don't know, I haven't watched it in years. Me neither. Um, Not available kid, on Disney it's... Plus. Mm-hmm. No. no. But it's it scared the crap out of me, and I, I wonder if it still would. See, you know, although, for the longest time, it was available on YouTube, like the movie in its entirety. Yeah, but for yeah, a while these, there, Return to Witch Mountain are... scared me too. But they, when they released this, they released movies like Condor Man, the Witch Mountain films, just b- bog standard, bare bones. There's nothing on this at all. Mm. I'm amazed it's even in widescreen. <laughs> oh, no, they're, they're that unloved. It's probably not even anamorphic. David McCallum's in it, Betty Davis, Carol Baker, Lynn Holly Johnson from For Your Eyes Only is in this as well, which is going to be a good one. Well, it was made in England, wasn't it? Yeah. It's David McCallum. It's w- Around the time when- that he was doing Sapphire and Steel, he was, he was he made this, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so a bit of a like scary Disney from that that uh, raft. That of was awesome. Well, they did me, they did a fantastic one too uh, around that time, and it had um, the guy from the one that played the master in the uh, com- the comedy special. Uh, Jonathan Price. Yes, um, he played a. It, it was based on a, a. It was based on a book. Oh, 
something wicked this way comes. Yeah. If you've ever seen that, that is a really, really scary Disney film. I, uh, I'm fairly certain I've seen it, but it was probably 40 years ago. Yeah, it was around that time, and it was, it was freaky then, and it's freaky now. You know. Well, I remember my. Ever... Uh, well, my dad used to uh, pick up all these uh, Disney films. Like Disney must be for kids, and every single one of them just scared the living <laughs> shit. Even their, the even their animated <laughs> movies back then are freaking dark. Oh, uh, no, it wasn't the Apple protect... Dumpling Gang, then. Hmm? <laughs> it wasn't the Apple Dumpling Gang, then. No, the, uh, like. <laughs> I get rid of woke Disney. Bring back dark Disney. I want dark. That's Disney a that's a back. weird thing because when I have Disney Plus, they have this thing called nostalgic movies from like and... ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. These are Welcome from like the seventies, seventies, eighties, and that. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's very bare bones. It's like, oh, there's much, much more, much, much more than what they're showing so yeah well not only that uh, all the fox movies which have basically been locked in the vault and mm. gone out of print and you can't get them anywhere now i i, mm. I despise disney i was so sad when they bought fox i'm like well yes we could say goodbye to the fox catalog on physical media and really being available anywhere since you explained yeah. that to us on on the last one of these shows on one of the vam shows uh, that uh, things like the X-Files were being just taken out of print. That's really mm. got me thinking about the things that I don't own uh, and things that I've always taken for granted that I'd always be able to get. And you think, God, Well, there's you things know, that have been available for years. I'm like uh, uh, Buffy and Angel, if you're a fan of those, even though it was on the uh, <sighs> UP, uh, Warner and later UPN, those are Fox. Um, there's the, uh, it's a very bad HD remaster, but the HD remasters of... Uh, Buffy are never going to see the light of day on physical media. And I, as far as I know, I think the uh, the DVDs are out of print. But the, there were so many versions of them available for so many years. It'll be a long time before they sell out. Same thing as the X-Files. Um, if you just want the show on DVD and not Blu-ray, um, they were so mass-produced, that'll be a while before those sell out. But on Blu-ray, um, as soon as it was, it, it was quietly, not really announced, but quietly made known that it was going out of print, so the uh, the Blu-rays they vanished overnight because everybody was panic buying, which sucks because those were those only came out late 2015. There's no reason why there shouldn't still be masses of them. Yeah, it's because they want you to go to Disney Plus and watch the X Files there. See, and the thing is, there are a lot of people that are willing to release these things on Blu-ray and actually pay it out of their own coffers to to. Um, you know, to actually produce them and everything, but they won't give them the licenses. No, it's, uh, well, the, the boutique labels, uh, yeah. like, you know, a lot of like, and if you look at them, like some of the, like even Warner, they've got Warner Archive. Uh, Paramount is finally releasing their uh, their classics, well, movies on Blu-ray very well, late in the game. Um, but you have the uh boutique labels like kino uh shout slash scream arrow video um they they don't even bother with disney and apparently none of them will even bother trying to get the rights for anything from fox anymore because disney just laughs at them i got um recently i got the world of brothers grim by um that was warner's archive and um they did a spectacular spectacular job they actually released it in both uh, anthropomorphic and also, I think they call it cinema. I think it might have been cinemascope or or some other version that it was a. It was a really. It was like a watching it in a fish eye type of um, okay, film. Yeah. Okay. And so they actually released. They actually had it both on the same disc, so you could watch it. Um, it, it looks a little weird, but. Um, yeah, so and those sort of things I love because it's not like you know they're actually showing it in its original perspective as a, a how it was actually shot, and so well, yeah. Well, stuff like that. I'm like, people keep saying physical media is dying. It's not dying. It's <sighs> a niche. Uh, physical media, specifically, not so much DVDs now, but uh, Blu-ray and 4K, have taken up the space that 30 years ago, well, 20 years ago was Laserdisc. Uh, mm. If you look at it, the, the, the market back in the 80s and 90s is, you know, the regular normies. They'd rent from Blockbuster. Um, 
most movies were not available to buy. You'd have to buy Blockbuster previewed. But the uh, but the collectors would go to Laserdisc, and Laserdisc was purchased to own, not purchased to rent, uh, like VHS. And Laserdisc, the only reason it doesn't exist anymore is it was supplanted by uh, DVD, and the last Laserdisc was printed around 2001. Uh, we're now that in a nice. similar that, situation. That has surprised me. Most, I think, the common common held belief is that uh, is that laser discs died out in the early nineties at the latest. No, no, no. They uh, laser no. They they had a very very healthy market for twenty years from uh, over twenty years from nineteen seventy nine. Originally, it was called Disco Vision up until 2001. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking release... about that ad with Leonard Nimoy. If you've ever yeah. seen that, it's hilarious. So, well, it's uh, yeah. So you're talking like 22 years, and actually, the the final movie to come out was a Nicolas Cage movie. Um, but the uh, but <laughs> no, the, but that's it. but if you look at it now, uh, the the home video market is very similar, just different. Uh, if you compare, say, the 2020s to the 1990s, the average person uh, just streams and you know will rent things online. The collectors. Uh, will go to a Blu-ray in 4K. Uh, so it's become the and, and it's actually uh, 4K. The sales are they keep increasing um, almost to the point beyond what they had originally envisioned because it was only designed to be a collector's format. Uh, but it's if you look at the the home video market between uh, DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K. Uh, more titles are released every week if you take into account the uh, boutique labels. The average 60 on average titles being released a week between the major studios and all the boutique mm -hmm. labels. Uh, there's actually more being released now than there ever has been on the uh, three disc based formats, which is a good thing. Uh, so the, the market now for 4K and Blu ray is several times the size of what Laserdisc was and it, it's it's plateaued somewhat but 4k is the is the new Laserdisc, and it is growing year over year um and as people are starting to realize that their favorite shows are disappearing from streaming services mm. um, a lot of people are switching over to physical media also in terms of manufacturing Laserdisc was only ever really supported by pioneer um you still have your yeah, uh, say lg sony panasonic one. Um, uh, Ravon, uh, which is a well, you know when I when I pick label. up these DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff that I find the the general conversation I go you know, if if it's at a car boot sale or something like that and people are selling stuff that they own or stuff that their family owned the conversation usually goes along the same lines of oh well just wanted to free up some house space it's all on the telly now anyway isn't it no, it's, it's all not. online now anyway and no, and not. I just nod my head and go yeah I know. <laughs> Thanks. Is your twenty? Is your twenty-five P love? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, no, Thank you, you uh, say say you want to pick a movie at random. I, I don't know. I want to watch this movie. Oh, I got yeah. six streaming services. Oh, it's not on any of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and not only that, but it's worldwide. Last week, she said she'd had that. She only sold her DVDs a little while ago, and she's had that experience already. Yeah. Yeah. It's I like, mean, you've got you've got Ian with his new. Um, with with bad day coming out on Netflix in the UK, not being released here at all. Um, uh, so no, it's not released here either. Although I can watch it through, a, I'm going to watch it through a VPN. Okay. Yeah. So well, if, you I have a, if you have a VPN, Netflix is the only streaming service that doesn't block. Uh, all the other ones do, but no, Until Netflix. Soon. I can watch it anywhere. So I just switched the VPN to London or something, and so I'll probably be watching it uh, this week. <laughs> yes, good film. Bad Day by our mate Ian David Dears, everybody. If you've not seen that, it's on Netflix as of this evening. I think uh, yeah, it was uh, today. So, yeah, so. I just... um, I, I It just annoys me that, you know, I, you, you actually have to see that the film has only a few days left. There's no actual way of it telling you that the, the expiry is going to happen on the film. So unless you actually literally go to see the film and then it says, oh, this expires in six days. Oh, right. No, my, so, uh, my you know, experience... You, you put all was... these things on your watch list and then you 
want to well, get that's around why, to that's it. why i get irritated that's what i hate mm-hmm. about physical media or not i mean uh, streaming services because I, I don't even bother with the watch list anymore unless it's an exclusive mm-hmm. because it's like oh where's this show oh it's gone but I, I think i said this before i think last week i was talking about why i actually despise amazon prime because they will actually <laughs> leave everything in your watch list and yes. I and I went through and like I you know I save a lot of documentaries and obscure things. I'm like I want to watch this later. I might want to rewatch this again. So I went to my Amazon account and clicked on all the stuff. Nope, not available in the area. Not like everything is gone. It's, it's like, like my experience um, with the uh, Bates Motel. Why I wanted to watch it, so I ended up spending 150 bucks to get the 4K or the uh, Blu-ray set. It's like they had um they had a whole heap of British comedies that i'd never seen they're still black and white you know with kenneth connor and all those and i put them all on my watch list to watch at some point and then i thought yeah no i'll watch i'll watch one of them i feel like watching, stuff it. And then watching a rainy gone. afternoon yeah, gone it's vanished gone it looks like it's still in your watch watch list yeah but it's gone no you just uh, click on it it's no not longer in your that's Before... why I'm glad i still have my uh because i used to uh, every sitcom i used to watch on um, amazon prime is gone but uh, you know, I just get it for convenience. I used to watch Married with Children all the time. That disappeared last Christmas, but I still have all but the last two seasons on DVD. Uh, Roseanne that disappeared completely. I don't not the reboot, but the original series. Um, I think it may she was cancelled. That services. disappeared. <laughs> yeah. So what well, I've got it's terrible, awful, awful, awful quality. But I have the Mill Creek complete season set. Uh, we all have guilty pleasures, and one of my guilty pleasures, and you can laugh at me if you want, is Two Broke Girls. Yeah, I know. Uh, oh, no, I they, like that. What's the face? I like that. What's the face? Released now, oh, uh, what's her name? The show with Kat Dennings in. Yeah, you that's her. It, yeah. it finished in uh, 2017. Uh, they actually, you'll never see this re-release because now it's completely politically incorrect. Um, yeah, that one I uh, used to be one of those shows where I'm having a crappy day. I'll watch it. Um, I ended up getting the blue, the DVD set for cheap. Ended up being a, a bootleg. Uh, I ended up just keeping it anyway because it's it's actually been taken out of print, so you can't get it anymore. So I'll just stick with it. But yes, I we all have our guilty pleasures. That's one of mine. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you're allowed to have a guilty pleasure. <laughs> and uh, and Dan, Dan was so disgusted he left. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that's fine. I mean, I just. Um... I, I'm so sick of all these streaming services where they have apps inside the streaming services as well. Because you uh, had this... Amazon, Amazon, yeah, is... well, Apple as well. Apple well, TV. I, I, I refuse. I, I've never had Apple TV. I never. Well, I, I got Apple six TV. months free with it. Oh, okay. But there's yeah. nothing really interesting. The only one that I'm interested in at the moment is um, for all mankind, um, which are long episodes. So it's like you're gonna have to have. You know, and the time to watch it. Got me uh, switched on to that uh, when she came on the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I started so watching it, and I was like, this yeah. is something I'd probably be interested in. But, Chris, you before... know, when they're an hour and a half. and Yeah, some of them are, are quite long. Before we mm. go, Chris, you said you'd got some information about some new releases that you wanted to talk about. Oh, uh, yes. Well, if you like, so um, uh, it, it's good and it's not good. So, you know, my, my favorite boutique label has always been uh, Scream Factory, uh, Shout Factory's horror imprint here in North America, although they actually do sell really well overseas uh you just need a region free player uh so shout factory or well scream factory have kind of changed their release strategy from what i can tell um this year their standalone dvd or blu-ray releases i think fire in the sky i have a feeling it was the last standard blu-ray release that may be widely available um, because every right. ever since then they've made it right, site Phil. exclusives. I bought yeah, several of them, uh, limited releases, although they're rather expensive to import into Canada. Um, just give me a second here. I'm just going to uh, just pull this. Ah, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Yep. Okay, so finish. So they they've been uh, putting out releases through. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'll have to share my entire screen because I have to switch browsers. Uh, so yeah, so they they've been mainly uh, limited to uh, 1,500 units. Actually, I should probably switch that so everybody doesn't get vertigo. Are you able to see it? I'm on a different screen. Uh, so anyway, so they, they've 
some of their releases lately have been a little bit wacky, but these are their two site exclusives, which I found out about today, but they were released yesterday. And both of them look completely batshit. Uh, <laughs> so the, the first one, uh, we have The Hot Box, a tropical torture chamber where anything can happen. Um, I've never <laughs> heard of this, but I am very intrigued. It so sounds filthy, but it can't be anywhere near as dirty as I'm thinking. It's obviously quite a nasty film. Uh, I don't know, uh, I, but I, I may order this one just out of curiosity. Uh, but yeah, there's standard Blu-rays now. It seems like they're they're all uh, site exclusives, which sucks because they're a lot more expensive. But I can see kind of why they're doing that. They're keeping uh, the wider uh, releases, which I think now are going to be exclusively 4K um, for the wider market. But anyway, so that was one that was announced. And the other one looks even, uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. And if that oh, one did look I've heard funny. of this. <laughs> so oh. David Carradine, the warrior and the sorceress, an age undreamed of, an age of mystery and magic. It looks like George... Chevy Chase. <laughs> no, no, th this looks like uh, it's probably well, it's David Carradine, so it could be a, a, a little slutty. He was a, he was a strange chap. Um, <laughs> no kidding. But uh, but no, that this actually looks well, especially so how he ended. Good. Uh, so I'm debating ordering this one as well, just because I, now that I've seen, I have to see this. Uh, I yeah. love so bad it's good. But those are the the two now site <laughs> exclusives announced by uh, my heroes at Shout Factory. Are they region? What, what region love. are they? Uh, they're, they're, they're region one, uh, but all you need is just a uh, unlocked region player. I know they actually I have one of those. A lot of their most of their major releases, um, Arrow Video has the rights to in the UK, um, and I think mm. pretty much everywhere else. Uh, it's their more obscure releases. Yeah, you'll need a region free player. Uh, but anyway, so um, so yeah, two of the strangest releases I've seen come from Screen Factory <laughs> in a while, and I may I will probably end up getting both of them. Because I'm very curious. So there I go. love the fact that this label in particular do persevere with the original artwork where they can, and the fact they include it as as well. It said on the uh, on the blurb there includes fold up poster of the of the cover artwork because they know that sort of airbrushed look that the Chris Akaleos look. You've seen some of his some of his other work, sort of outside Doctor Who, all the other stuff that he did. It reminds me of that. Um, unmistakably 80s stuff where David Carradine, he was in good shape that man, but he wasn't in that good shape. It's just great stuff. I, <laughs> I'm sure I've seen that film. I think I rented that back in the day on VHS. I, I, I may have seen it. It almost looks like one of those things that you would have seen on one of those networks that carries terrible movies and porn at like two o'clock <laughs> in the morning. But th there's <laughs> something absolute. This is why I love Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, because most of what they put out, like they'll have the occasional, like they're actually put, putting out the 4K Master of Amityville Horror and a few other big things. But for the most part, they release unknown independent films. And most of them, I'd say about half of what I own, the films are terrible. And I love it. There's just something awesome about a terrible movie from the 80s that you just can't replicate. I, and I it's agree. like, and we all remember... When we were Stop kids, you know, magic. watching those one o'clock, two o'clock terrible movies on like science fiction or whatever cable channel. Uh, that's why I love Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, once a year, I do a big order on their Black Friday special, and I work my way through them over the years. And you know, it's going to be bad, but you know, it's going to be awesome. So that's why I want to get these. <laughs> I, I love so good it's bad, and I even love just bad from the '80s because there's just something yeah, awesome about the, the 80s of aesthetic I somehow do. it just makes it's, it all right it's what, stuff almost that you get from, we all remember the video rental stores where you know you'd have all these direct all this direct to video crap and you'd rent it anyway and it was terrible and you didn't care because you had yeah. your you know your your big gulp and you know you had your bag of chips or i guess well crisps as you call them over there and it's like yeah, yeah it's it recreates oh, my geez. youth of watching crap and I would take a bad 80s movie over anything current year. I can't say I can argue with that for a single moment. Let us know what you think of, of this conversation, of this video in the comments section about these new releases that are coming there from, from uh, Shout Factory. Thanks for that, Chris. No, and about welcome. our picks for the week, the things we've got on order and the things we found we've scurried around for. And uh, yeah, anything else you'd like us to talk about 
on this on these uh, after shows, these VAM shows, as I keep calling them. Yes, value added material. That's what VAM stands for, the people that keep asking in the live chat when I drop these videos. But yeah, thanks for getting involved, everybody, for getting into the spirit of it here on the Spacebook channel. There's more to come next week, I can promise you of that. But uh, yeah, God save the king. You lot take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Where's my, where's my little music gone? Where it is? There it is.